competing against each other in the same class and this is made possible by a results calculation system based on a mathematical formula which was instigated by the athletes many years ago the weather far from ideal for alpine ski racing or for watching alpine ski racing low cloud it's raining it's just basically very miserable just the one run of slalom and uh, that time will be carried forward to the super g tomorrow you know, all the times that you will see <laughs> on your screen are factored or calculated times and uh, this is a result of this calculation system that i was talking about which gives each class within the classification a factor and this is applied to the individual's time uh, and it gives a level playing field and it's important to point out as i said that the time you see is the factor of calculated time well the technicians are going to be very very busy because the snow conditions are very difficult this is the start list for the visually impaired run for the women and look out for number one for Kasova. she uh, has one gold medal already in these games as does number three kelly gallagher but for Kasova will be the lady to watch out for in the visually impaired as for the standing well marie boot boucher already two gold medals she swept the board at the world championships last year red hot favorite for gold in the super combined as well anna jacobson will be doing her best to try and put her off her beat if she can but uh, it would be a major surprise if Boucher doesn't lead the way into the super G part of the super combined and here is the sitting just uh, the five athletes in this classification a couple of big big falls yesterday and, uh, the skier to watch out for in uh, the sitting. Well, there is only one, and not Shaffle who is uh, a red hot favourite as well. A double gold medalist along with Boucher. Melissa Perrin just making her way to the start hut, and this is the course profile of the slalom 52 gates set by Manuel Huara of Austria. 200 meter vertical drop but uh, this piece has not been used in these Paralympic Winter Games yet so it should be in fairly good nick for the skiers although the weather hit will not have helped it's very very steep it will be a real examination of these athletes slalom techniques we've seen a fairly high attrition rate in the races so far I think we might get the same again so the women's super combined is about to get underway and Henrietta Vysakova of Slovakia will be the first skier down this pitch the super combined has been switched around it should have been super G this morning in slalom this afternoon but because of the weather the slalom will be first and uh, the Super G will be later now. Let's try and pick them out of this soup as they come down. Now, in the slalom event, the technical event, the guys can be two gates in front, and the speed event's only one. And so Sarkovic is skiing this fantastically well. Probably harder for the guide in these conditions. Well, we'll turn up red and blue gates. There's the verticale before we go back into the gates across the hill. And for Sarkova, he's making this look ever so easy. The toughest of conditions. And she really is skiing this well. She made a mistake in the Super G on day three of competition. Was bitterly disappointed not to pick up a medal there. Inside to the finish. Oh no, she's missed the final gate. Pasakova misses the final gate. Wow, she'd skied it brilliantly, but an error 
right at the end will see her disqualified from the competition. Next out of the start hut, Alexandra Franceva of Russia, her guy Pavel Zabotin. And the coach is down at the bottom with a noted for Sarko's error, missing that final gate. Pavel is just, just getting worse and worse, these conditions really tricky. Zabotin, keeping a good distance between himself and Fenceva. The cyclist first foot time 33.54. Don't have a clock on the screen for you at the moment. Oh, here it is. Look at his time. There's a good one against Sarkasovas. Now, Francova. Skiing in the B2. Class three classes in the visually impaired B1, B2, B3. Class profile includes athletes that are unable to recognize the letter E. And that letter being 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters from a distance of 50, uh, 25 centimeters. But Francova leads by 0.87. Good run from the Russian athlete who uh, has a bronze and silver already to her name. In these games. Now the next out the gate, very quickly, Kelly Gallagher, the uh, winner of the Super G on day three, and her guide Charlotte Evans. She uh, won silver in the slalom at the World Championships in 2011. She was second in the World Championships of Super Combined in Lamalina in 2013. Now, full of confidence, I would imagine, after that gold medal in the Super G, she was very disappointed after the downhill where she finished last. Now, how's she doing here? Point four two. And she'll want to finish this with a Super G to come as the second part of this Super Combined. A chance here for Gallica to add to her medal tally. Oh, no! She's gone down. Now the guy can't pick her up. And uh, that is the end of the challenge for Kelly Gallagher. So disappointment for her. So Francifa is down. Francifa and Gallagher are out. Next out the start hut, Melissa Perrin of Australia and her guide Andrew Bohr. Perrin, who was uh, in the lead at the final time split in the Super G before missing a gate. Can she make up with it? Fourth in the downhill, the DNF in the Super G. She'll be full of confidence if she can get to the bottom of this very, very difficult slalom run. Yeah, just six athletes in this category. And two of them have not finished. So real chances for medals at these uh, Winter Paralympic Games. Now, Perrin was 1.62 outside the time. Uh, can see that. Perrin, very steadily down here. Good job being done by Andrew Bohr. Fans of his time, 56, 58, 68. He's not beaten, but Perrin has finished. He'll be in second place at the moment. Fans of, cast of his time will be eliminated now. Danelle Umstead of the United States and her husband, Robert. Sixth in the world. Cup standings, sixth in the World Championship slalom in 2011. Fourth at the World Champs and Super Combined, and conditions here very, very difficult. Now, 
Fantastic job being done by the guys here. Instead, not as quick visually as Franceva. She's uh, seven seconds down at the first time, but she's uh, picking her way down here. I think at the time, that will be too big bird to challenge for gold, but certainly there's a chance of uh, a medal. If she can get to the bottom. Now, front of the side, 58-68. Unsted inside of the finish. Stops the clock, 9.8 seconds off the calculated pace. So, France of Atlees from Perrin Umstead now. Jade Etherington, who's got two medals from these games, like France of Silver in the downhill, bronze in the Super G. What can she do here? She was fourth at the World Championship Slalom in 2013. This is her first Paralympic game. Fancy her chances of a medal here if she can negotiate this slalom course safely. Caroline Powell shouting the instructions. First time set of France of her 31 98. And Edrington is outside it by 2.31 seconds. So Franceva has uh, really laid down the corner here. She's the world champion in Super Combined. She's also the world champion in GS and Super G. Still medicine downhill and slalom. So five medals from those games. What? And she's got here where she's going to be leading the super combined after the slalom stage and Edrington goes fourth which would be third 3.12 off the pace of France of Perrin Edrington Unstead the one two three four for Kasava and Gallagher will not ski the second part of the super combined so here is the result. Well, there is a star by the name of Henrietta for Kasava because she missed that penultimate gate. But Franceva, no doubt about her, she leads the way from Melissa Perrin, Jade Edrington, and Danel Unstead. Those will be the four skiers going through to the Super G part of the Super Combined. The uh, result of visually impaired woman in third position, Jack Etherington, repeated from Australia. Chat from the coaches. But look at the rain, it's absolutely pouring down here. Really miserable conditions for the skiers and the supporters. Disqualification for Kasava. Power is having a quick chat. So we're just waiting now for the women's super combined standing category to get underway. And the crowd just sitting right across the course like a belt. So here's the results. Well, oh, that is the unofficial results of the first run of the super combined in the visually impaired category for women. France of Perrin, Edrington, Unstead. Still, we wait. You can see the star there next to 
the Brutanova's name that is uh, means that it's under review but certainly she definitely missed that last gate so she will not ski in the second run so here is the start list for the women's super combined standing category on super combined day here for the Sochi Winter Games. Alison Jones will get us underway. Marie Beauchet is the big favourite. Inga Medvedeva of Russia harries the hopes of the home fans. And at the top 10 have been randomly selected. So Alexandra Starka and above their start bib number has been randomly selected. Uh, Stephanie Yellen and below is on the World Cup points basis. Alison Jones will get us underway in this women's super combined standing category. Seven classes in this category. LW1, LW2, 3, 4, LW5, 7, LW6, 8 and LW9. Jones being in class LW2 for skiers that have a significant impairment in one leg. There's the outriggers. And Jones, oh! My word, how did she recover that? She's had one second on the World Cup this year in slalom. She's won a Super Combined. She won the last Super Combined before coming into these Sochi Games in Carvisio, Italy. Double world champion in slalom. And that showed with a fantastic recovery of the piece. And she's... A little bit of difficulty in that middle section, but uh, Jones still going well. Bronze medalist in the downhill. She's going to set a time here in the standing category, and that time is 101.35. So, good work from Jones. Now, Marie Boucher of France has won four. Well, all four of the solo events she's skied on the World Cup tour this year. And four of seven skiing in the LW682 class. So she's having impairment in one arm. Some of them will have impairments in arms and legs. World champion in this discipline. And she is in all the disciplines, in fact. She missed out on a medal here. Super combined in Vancouver and look at that five seconds faster than uh, Alison Jones at the first time slip. She is really laying down a fantastic. Oh, has to get the ski sideways there to uh, keep it under control. And Boucher tucks for the finish. It's going to be a quick time. It's a very quick time. 7.87 seconds inside that of Jones. So Boucher, that's the time that Medvedeva will do well to get near. Now before this season, slalom wasn't her best discipline, but uh, she's improved dramatically because she's currently third in the World Cup slalom standings. Second in the downhill on day one. She's disqualified in the Super G on day three of competition. And she has got some shocking conditions to deal with. Medvedeva. The uh, Russian favourite in this field. They also have Maria Papulova skiing. Slalom, uh, the only discipline that uh, can be skied in conditions such as this. And Medvedeva doing a great job but laying down a competitive time. Just uh, almost four seconds off the pace of Boucher. I would be very surprised if anyone gets close to Boucher in this slalom run. And Medvedeva inside of the finish. A few hardy fans still here to greet the athletes. 
And 7.38 off the pace. Medvedeva slots into second. About half a second in front of Alison Jones, and uh, she's quickly out the finish area. Get herself out of the rain. Anna Jochumsen of the Netherlands now is out of the gate. LW2 class. Oh no, she's down. And her ski is off. Now, what happened there? Disappointment for the Dutch supporters. Okay. Uh, and, uh, try and get a ski back on. Just trying to make a, a level plateau for her to self. We'll have a hold. It's uh, Petra Smazova, the Czech Republic of Slovakia, sorry, who's. Uh, Having to just hang fire. Very difficult work for the technicians. And Wilkinson got herself out of the way. And Smizova can push out the gate. The LW682 class, similar to that of Bechet. Smizova, second in slalom from the World Championships in 2011. Medaled in Vancouver a bit in GS. He's not a bad technical skier, so hopefully he has the full point of view, get close to the time of Sada Bechet. 30.05, very, very competitive. Here comes that first time check, and it's over. Well, wow. he was five seconds off the pace of Bechet in the opening 30 seconds. It just shows how well Bache is skiing at the moment. Plenty of confidence for the double Paralympic champion from the Sochi Games. Into the finishing stroke for Smazova. She's out of the cloud. Visibility perfect now. Conditions of snow. Not so good though. 53 48 won't be beating Smazova. Fourth, eight seconds off the pace. Medvedeva, Jones, and Smazova separated by uh, seven tenths of a second. They are all eight, seven to eight seconds off the pace of Bechet. Now, quickly out the gate here is Andrea Roffus. Oh, but Germany, she's had a really, really disappointing game. She's DNF both races so far, but slalom she likes. She's second in the slalom standings. Fourth in the super combined standings. Second in the World Cup Championship, who they took silver medalist in the World Championship in this discipline. So she's uh, 1.23 off the seconds. The first intermediate gets a little late in the line there, but Rufus looks like she's going to finish her first run at these Olympics at the third time of asking. Side of the finish, and that's a decent time 2.38 off the pace of Boucher. One two here is the one two from the World Championship. Melania Corradini was supposedly next out the gate, but she's a non starter since Maria Papulova of Russia. She missed the 2010 Paralympics, the Winter Paralympics because of a broken right leg. Fifth in the Super Combined at the World Championships, and she's twice fifth here. And downhill and super G. I'm not sure the camera isn't steamed up actually. I don't think the visibility is quite as bad as it would appear. Yeah, there you go. That's slightly better. Now, 3.8 off at the first time check. Oh no, 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 no. Got too hot in the line and she skis out. So, disappointment for the Russian fans. The pool of it. Gets too hot on the line and uh, can't make the gate. Celine Jambak, high on confidence. 
after her silver medal in the Super G on day three of competition. And the LW92 class, the skiers in this sport class have an impairment that affects arms and legs. Now Jambak likes the speed events and uh, using the ski pole to keep herself square to the line, the full line that is, and that's uh, a good technique and let's see how it fares on her time, very wide around those couple of gates, but, but now it gets it back under control, this is a long way off the pace, 6.25, she was world champion in super combined back in 2011, that's uh, Struggling on this slalom run here this afternoon. Now, Jambak, she's outside the time of Bush 8. Ten seconds off the pace. Alexandra Starker of Canada, the last of the top 10 seeds. Three times a bronze medalist in La Molina at the World Championships last year in slalom and super combined. She's won a slalom race this season and she's in there somewhere. Here she comes. Incredibly difficult conditions. Shay's time, 30.05. I'm not sure we'll be bettered from here on in. Starker, the last of the top 10 seeds, so everyone from now on will have lower world ranking numbers. Starker. Doing a good job though, 53.48 has long gone. And uh, 103.63 is Jan Back's time, and Stark at 106.59 slots into seven. Now, Stephanie Yallen of the United States of America, a bronze medalist, a very emotional bronze medalist in the Super uh, in the super G from day three. And even our cameraman is having difficulty picking her out of this pea soup. Incredible balance from the youngster, just 18 years of old. She's won a slalom race in the World Cup Tour this season. But Doing a phenomenal job. All the weight down her right side of her body, making it very, very difficult to maintain her balance. And now you can see a very late direction change to make the red gate. It's so hard to see. And she's gone for a very dark lens in her goggles, which I'm very surprised about. I would imagine to see a lot of orange or yellow lenses not the mirrored ones anyway 53.48 she has done really well four and a half seconds off the pace and the one she shakes her head that's a great run from stephanie yallen who is still obviously high on confidence from that fantastic performance in the super g now melanie schwartz the united states she was 10th in the Super Combined in Vancouver when she represented Canada. And now represents the US. She too has won a slalom race on the World Cup Tour this year. And I can guarantee you it probably wasn't in conditions as bad as this. Thirty-two, 30.05 um, leaders time for Schwartz. Picking her way down here. 
stop the clock at 40.99. Two more skiers to come after Melanie Schwartz. Short skiing in the L. W2 class. There's a significant impairment in one leg. Oh, gets a little sideways now. Oh no, she has gone. I thought she'd managed to pull it back. But Schwartz got a little twisted in the upper body and uh, comes to grief inside to the finish. Disappointment for Schwartz. Nobody in the winner's enclosure today because this is the first of two runs in the Super Combined. Now, Erin Latimer of Canada in the LW682 class. The skiers are having impairment in one arm. And the skiers have combined arm and leg impairments. Now, Latimer is really, really upset after skiing out of the Super G on day three. Let's hope she can get to the bottom, just 17 years of age. She only skied her first World Cup event in January, so baptism of fire to uh, the highest level of Paralympic uh, para competition. 6.82 off the pace of Boucher. Final pitch. It's a really, really steep run. This it's a severe test of their slaloming skills. And uh, Latima doing a good job. Shea's time. That's not important for Latima. She just wants to get down, get herself qualified for the second run, which she does. Ninth for the time being, 13.7 off the pace for Erin Latima. Now Ursula Puyol Malimon, who uh, had a bit of a shock at the Super G on uh, day three. She uh, stumbled out of the start gate. But uh, decent slalom skier. She's fourth in the World Cup standings this year. First time though she's, she's super combined at a major event. But, uh, this is her strongest discipline, the Super G, which is rearranged for later in the competition. We're not exactly sure when that will be raced just yet. It'll be a bit of a test for her. It may be, in fact, if uh, she doesn't start the second part of the Super combined. Now that she's got to look at the slalom course, it could well have been a uh, plan of hers. Well, no, she's skied out there. And she's going to try and get back up inside that blue gate. And, uh, well, for your Malimon, it's out of time. 1.12.76, uh, almost 20 seconds off the pace of Boucher. So, of the 15 competitors who are on the start list, uh, two didn't start, three didn't finish, and so 10 will go through. Now, uh, Manamon's time is under review. The uh, top of the pole is going to be reviewed by the jury to see if she can come back for the second part. Look at those conditions, horrendous, aren't they? So here are the standings after the first run of the Super Combined, the slalom. Marie Boucher of France, the double gold medalist from the downhill of the Super G, leads the way by 2.38 seconds from her best rival, really, on the circuit, Andrea Roffer. Stephanie Yallen, the bronze medalist in the Super G, is third. And uh, Inga Medvedeva of Russia is fourth, seven seconds off the pace of Boucher. So, uh, 
some big time gaps in there, but also some big time gaps that some skiers can ski into to take a medal in this super combined. Crowd certainly enjoying themselves. Not sure how much the skiers are. Very, very difficult conditions. So two of the six categories we've seen today have been raced. And we've been paired women. And the standing women. Now we wait for the sit ski of the women's super combined and then we move on to the men. Look how wet that snow is at the top. Very difficult condition. And the men going through the course in their mind. That's Maciej Kresel of Poland. So the Alpine skiing women's super combined sit ski is just about to get underway and just the five athletes which number one, Anna Schaffelhubert, is the big favourite. Claudia Loesch is uh, her biggest rival in this category. But uh, some big crashes yesterday for Stephanie Victor. And Alana Nichols means that they are not uh, taking part in this race, uh, news from the hostel, if you were with us on day three when they were helicoptered off the mountain, is that they are okay. So Anna Schaffelhuber of Germany gets us underway in the women's super combined sit skiing category. Skiing in the LW102 class. There are three classes in this category. LW tennis for skiers have no or minimal trunk, trunk stability. For example, they either have spinal cord injuries or spinal bifida, and they rely mainly on their arms to maneuver the sit ski. And uh, Shaffer Hubert in there somewhere. Here she comes. And uh, right, we just hope that uh, these conditions are the same for everybody. Now, the poles that they use in the slalom are not the same that they use in the able-bodied version. They are thinner by uh, not by much. In the able-bodied is a 30 mil diameter. Here it's a 27 mil. That difference means that the skiers can hit it with their shoulders and not break their collarbone. The 30 mil posts cause a number of injuries to the shoulders where the 27 doesn't surprisingly enough. Anna Shavuba stops the clock just over a minute, one minute and point seven three. Incredibly difficult. Claudia Loesch of Austria next out of the start. LW10 class. The skiers that have good abilities in their upper trunks. Oh dear, she's had an error out of the start gate have uh, limited control in their lower trunks and hips. Wow. I'm afraid not much I can tell you about this run at the moment. It's very difficult to see. And it's not surprising, Loach is also struggling, getting quite late in the line. This could be expected. Here she comes. Now, Shafflehoop is tied, 33.9. Uh, 
I know she's almost coming to a standstill here because she can hardly see. It's, uh, sorry, even with the bright lights on, you can see the lights inside of the piece, but they're not really helping proceedings. See here, just get to the bottom if you can in one piece. And, uh, well, that would be a different competition in itself. Give yourself a shot of a medal. So one minute, 0.73. Comes, goes, low stops it in 105.12, 4.39 off the pace. And good job from the 25-year-old uh, Austrian. And she'll be glad. Get inside, I'm sure. Laurie Stevens to the United States, the third here out of the hut in the 60 category of the women's super combined. The uh, third ranked skier in the field. Doing a fairly decent job of getting down. Now we wait for her to come out of the murk. Thirty-three point nine. It's not going to be decent, I don't think. It's just so difficult to see. It's virtually impossible. Stevens four point nine six off the pace. That's. Uh, Second slow than Loesch was, who's in second position at the moment at that point. Stevens, who uh, has Paralympic gold and silver from the Super G and Giant Slalom in Torino. Also world champion. And seven seconds off the pace, world champion on downhill in 20. The team, so she'll have to draw on that sort of form to uh, get amongst the medals. Okay, super combined. So, Annalena Forster, Germany, the next out. First Paralympic Games, but uh, she's the World Championship silver medalist in slalom and fourth in super combined. So, she could get herself in a really good position here. Difficult, difficult course. And this course will be rushing up all the time as these skiers go down. They try and follow the same line. The penultimate skier from the 60 category. And she's doing well. Look, 0.86. She looked better. She looked quicker on the top half. Of course, in the LW12-1 class. And the skiers that have any normal or any slightly decreased func function, function with leg impairments. At the beginning of their careers, actually, they can uh, sit or stand. Now, how is that uh, Forster going here? Wow, 0.31 off the pace. Really, really good run from Annalena Forster. No wonder she punches the air. Now, Anna Turney of Great Britain. Never medaled at a Paralympics or a Para World Championship. Sixth in slalom in Vancouver. Her best major results have come in slalom. So, a chance here perhaps for her, but she do take it just rather gingerly on those opening turns. Here she is. Just about to see her out of the gloom. Seven seconds separate first and fourth. Seven seconds and 0.68 to be precise. Now, where is turning? Here she comes. 33.9. And the first split time for Schaffelhuber. 
Four points to be run off the pace. I oh, know she's missed the gate. Now, gets back up, tries to pull herself between the gates. So the women's super combined standing category. Just seeing the results there. With uh, <laughs> Michelle leading the way from Rothfuss and Yallen. <laughs> the conditions not getting better, but here are the confirmation of those uh, standing results. Pache from Rothfuss, Yallen, Medvedev, Medvedev, sorry, Jones. As over is Jan back in Starker. And a couple of non-starters, three non-finishers. So there you go, confirmations of the non-starters and uh, the non-finishers. Mr. Theo Malimon, Mr. Gate, climb back up. I think she's got such a big time gap. Enjoying themselves, it's uh, very difficult for the skiers. Coaches down the bottom, making notes, passing them back up to the top. And, uh, the pause and proceedings while we move across to the men's competition. Thank you, Sasha. We are 
really is a miserable day for skiing. The uh, judges, course workers, having a chat. Some of these skiers from the visually impaired category sitting with their friends and family. Not back up towards the start. Men's super combined, visually impaired, run one will be slalom. And there are 14 competitors and their guides taking part in this run. The top nine have been, top nine seeds have been randomly drawn between one and nine. So Harris will get us underway. Krakow, the Giant Super G champion will be second. It's uh, number 10, Vladimir Dudas and below. They are all on uh, world ranking points. Dudas, the highest rank of those uh, bottom five. Well, that is an offensive of Russia. Alexander Franceva is uh, his sister. Uh, he was the world champion in slalom. He was third in super combined. <laughs> six gears will be coming down a little later on. That's Maciej Krezel of Poland. He's uh, guy, Anna Wojcinska. So the men's super combined for visually impaired will get underway with a slalom run and it will be Miloslav Haros and his guide Malas Hudik who get us underway. Second in the super combined and slalom at the uh, World Championships in La Molina. He's never stood on the top step of a podium at a major. Can he break that duck here? In, uh, Sochi, second in the down, he didn't finish the Super G. He was absolutely livid when he didn't finish the Super G. Took a bit of time before he uh, calmed down. Harris, 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 doing a good job of battling his way down this piece. It's uh, slightly better condition at the bottom here now, and uh, Hallis will uh, stop the clock. Uh, 54.29. Good job from Miloslav Hallis. Next up, it's Jakob Krakak, also of Slovakia. Won the slalom and super combined in Vancouver. They're defending his title here and getting a look at the slalom track. Oh, big recovery. Big recovery from Krakow. He's in the back seat, but uh, the remarkably well. Then he's lost his pole as well. Krakow on the edge here. Won a super combined in Panorama Canada in January this year. Second in Travisio in the World Cup finals at Italy. Just before these games, he's 2.37, the right side of the clock. But he's skied out. He's missed the gate, I think. Now, let's see if we can see what happened. Uh, straddle. Yeah, he straddled the gate. Yeah, just in the slow motion, Jakub Krakow made a mistake and he's uh, dear now. He's out of proceedings, disappointment for Krakow. So, Gabriel Juan Gorsic Ipes of Spain. Next out of the start hut with his guy, Josep Porno Ferreventura. Jose Ipes is second in the World Cup slalom standings. What 
can he do here? Good job on his top toe. Just to have had us down the bottom of the hill. Rosse Ipes. 29.97. Where's he going to be on the clock? 1.65 off the pace. Now, as the guy has better visibility, they can just increase the speed a little bit more. 54.29 is the time to beat at Halas. And Jose Ipez is in touch, 1.93 off the pace. Valerie. Red Kozubov of Russia next out of the gate with Evgeny Kerolev, his guide, top of the World Cup standings for Super Combined and for Slalom. He's won four Slalom races on the World Cup Tour this year. He hasn't won any Super Combines, but he's been very consistent. Last time he's taken on the Super Combined in the Paris. Interesting to see how he goes in the Super G. He was six on day three, but he's 1.2 through the right side of the clock here. And visibility for the guy getting better all the time. And for Kuzabov. Oh, now, how much has that killed his speed? The time, 54.29, well, he's inside by a long way, 3.69. A really good run from Valery Redkuzabov and uh, his guy, Evgeny Gadoev. Max Marco of France, the double bronze medalist from these games, and his guy, Robin Femi. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, he's got to be careful here. Can't go more than two gates in front. Didn't see how far he went. Now, it's all uh, come to an end for Marco. There you go, his tips crossed. You can hear. Disappointment for uh, Mac Marco. Tips crossed slightly earlier. That wasn't uh, the initial error. So disappointing for the Canadian supporters. Leon Santa Cana Matagui of Spain and his guide Miguel Galindo Gafez. Santa Cana, gold medalist from the downhill. He's been twice world champion in Super Combined in 11 and 9. This is the only medal that's missing from his collection. He has a medal in every discipline at the World Championships and a medal in every discipline apart from Super Combined at the Paralympic Winter Games. So will this be the chance to put that right? Well, he's 1.57 seconds off the pace of the Kuzabov at the moment. It's definitely visibility for the guys getting a lot better. Oh, no, 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 now. Uh, I thought he was inside the blue, but uh, no joy for Santa Cana. Leon Santa Cana Matagui. Oh no, he straddled, he straddled the blue gate anyway. Uh, he'll have to come back 
for the technical disciplines of Giant Slalom and Slalom. Alessandro Daldos and Luca Negrini of Italy, the next pair to start. That was his first Paralympic Games. Won the opening super combined of the season in Mount Hassan, New Zealand back in uh, August last year. He's had two second places in the World Cup in slalom as well. He didn't seem to be enjoying himself too much down this patch. In the B2 Catholic all the skiers in the top nine in the B2. And Daldos has skied out. Nothing here. And we just got his line wrong. Yes, we probably have to be enough was enough. So, Mark Faith of the United States, silver medalist from the Super Jeep with KD Yamamoto, his guide, next to go. B2 class once again. Athletes are unable to recognize the capital E. He will be 15 centimetres by 15 centimetres in size, and they can't recognise that from a distance of four metres. Not really a slalom man, but he can get down the bottom and be vaguely close or give himself a chance in the speed part of uh, the super in the bind. You can see taking a wide line around some of these gates. Kuzabov. Good work from Faitham. He is eighth in the World Cup standing. Oh, he came to a grinding halt there. And the guy, Yamamoto's done well because uh, he realised that his charge had stopped. And so he... Uh, Checked himself before he got too far in front and he's got Faithen down safely. Nine seconds off the pace. Fourth position, ladies and gentlemen, for Mark Batu representing USA 59.92. Well, the next year, even France have a real chance here for Russia to go 1 2. France has skiing with Hermann Agronovsky. And said, oh no, 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 no. Well, he gets it wrong at the top. And the mountain pays the price. Well, he was third. Oh, well, there's a straddle anyway. He was third in the World Championship for Super Combine. He was the World Champion in Slalom, so he'd have been having high hopes for this event. Disappointment for the Russian fans at the bottom of the piece. Vladimir Dudas of Slovakia with Michael Servan next to go. A medalist from the Salt Lake and Turin Paralympics. Second in slalom. In Turin, second in slalom at Salt Lake. Full medalist in Super G in Turin. So, on this day, would have been another prospect that's uh, struggling on these early turns here.
Uh, 28.74 the first time. 3.95 off the pace. In fourth place at the moment. First time he's raced super combined at the Paralympics. And, uh, so far, so good, he's doing all right. Dudas gets to the end, 6.52 off the pace, goes into fourth. And, uh, a chance, a really good chance in the Super G part of the Super Combined to get into the medals. Michael Belladic and Philip Motika next out of the start up. Fourth the Super Combined at the World Championship in 2009, Pyeongchang. Picking his way down the pattern of gates. 28.74 is the uh, first time check set by our leader, Fred Kuzabov. And uh, Beledic, 6.86 seconds off the pace. Wide on that gate, getting to the finishing pitch, the final few turns. And Beledic won't beat 50.6, but where will he stop the clock? And the answer is 12.08 off the pace. One minute and 2.68. Beledic goes into sixth position. Now, next out of the gate is uh, Maciej Kresel of Poland. And Kresel off on his challenge in the B3 category, which describes the least severe vision impairment eligible for alpine skiing. Those are athletes who have a restricted visual field of less than 40 degrees diameter or low visual acuity. And Kresel, going steadily, 3.56, respectable. And uh, that's the third best time at the first intermediate. Fifty point six comes and goes, five point eight nine goes four. Good job from Magic Kresel and Anna Orgazinska. And, uh, wow. That third place is tightly packed. Gorsa Ipa 5.62, Kresel at 5.89. Now, this is Malak Kubaka, who is uh, skiing in the B1 class. Now, skiers in this sports field. Uh, either blind or have very low visual acuity and they have to have their goggles blacked out and well well I'm not sure if the guide has made an error here Natalia Karipsova but uh, Kubaka sadly for him doesn't get three gates into his challenge Right, straddle the second gate, but uh, his direction from the start uh, wasn't the best. 
So Patrick Hetzma with Miloslav Makala of the Czech Republic with the 14th and final skier in the visually impaired category to challenge on this first run of the Super Combine. His first Paralympics hasn't been to World Championships either. Didn't finish the Super G. How will he fare here? Makala has died, doing a good job of talking the athlete down through this combination of gates, but uh, it's safe to say I think the Kuzabov is going to be... Oh, no, 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 he's down. Now, has he made the blue gate? Yeah, he has made the blue gate, it'll be all right. He can continue. Well, well done to Patrick Hetmer, coming back up and... Uh, Continuing. So the guide is not allowed to help the athlete get back up. Help me then. Won't be for Kuzabov's time, but he does stop the clock. 24.09 off the pace, 114.69. He goes into eighth place, but he'll be back to ski the super G part of the super combined. Well, there was the error, but he got it back together. And, uh, he's got to the bottom, and he will be back for the Super G part of the Super Combined. So let's have a look at the standings after the first run of the Super Combined, which was the slalom leg, and Red Kuzabov of Russia leads the way. Halas of Slovakia is in second, and Gorse Ipes of Spain is third. But uh, Maciek Kresel of Poland, very close to Gorse Ipes. Uh, just uh, 1,300 separating those two, so the battle for the medals is uh, really going to be interesting. Just uh, the eight skiers finished out of the 14 that uh, were due to start. So those eight will go forward to the second run. Still raining down at the bottom. And there's a few smiles to be had. So, as the floodlights try and beat their way. through the fog and we get ready for the men's super combined standing category. The athlete's getting ready at the top of the piece and again, strange choice of lens there, the dark lens, surely the yellow or orange lens is the way forward. <laughs> Here is the start list then for the men's super combined standing category and uh, all eyes from a Russian point of view will be on number eight, Alexei Bugayev, who has taken two medals already from this game, a silver and a bronze. Vincent Gauthier Manuel will be hoping to add to his collection as well. But a, a fascinating race here. No Marcus Salke of Austria here. He doesn't ski slalom, so he's not in the super combined. So a chance for somebody else to uh, get on the podium. He's 
see that steep pitch where it flattens off a little bit before then going into that other terrain change into the finishing straight. So the men's super combined run one is slalom and getting us underway is Romain Ribou of France in the LW 9-2 class. Yeah. Uh, seven classes in this classification. LW9, this is skiers that have an impairment that affects arms and legs. Some skiers will have coordination problems as well. They can make a ski with two skis and two poles, or two skis and one pole, and reboot is uh, one pole. his first Paralympic super combined race. He has uh, medals from Paralympics gone by. Silver in Salt Lake and the Super G in Giant Slalom. And uh, we will set the benchmark here. That's uh, 54.38. Good work from uh, Roma Ribou. Alexander Aliyabiev. Next to go, no individual Paralympic or World Championship medals. His ambition is to medal here. And the slalom would probably be his best opportunity. So, oh no, he straddles here and he's out. Aliyabiev. Will not make it through to the second run. And uh, took a big bang on one of the poles. Yes, just straddled that blue gate. Gets upended by the snow. And uh, smacks that blue pole. Disappointment for Malavi have a DNF for him. And the French coaches getting the information. Braden Luscombe of Canada pushes out of the start hut. His first Paralympics, he is yet to finish a run. He didn't finish either two training runs for the downhill, he didn't finish the downhill race or the Super G race. Luskin. Oh yeah, he's flying down here. 17th in the super combined standings. He's giving a really good account of himself here now. Can he keep it together? Onto that finishing pitch. Luskin to take it away from Ribu, who's the only skier to have finished the uh, standing slalom category so far. He's there, he's done it and he leads by 2.21 seconds. Good ski from Braden Luskin. And the tears flow from friends and family as their man makes it to the bottom of the piece finally here for the Paralympics. Matthias Lanzinger of Austria, his first Paralympics. He's got a full set of medals from the World Championships. He is the uh, super combined world champion. He came second in Super G, third in downhill. And he wants gold here. Is this his best chance? The 2013 disabled athlete of the year as voted for by Austrian journalist, Austrian disabled athlete of the year I should mention. Oh, dies inside that blue gate, but that will have cost him. Now he tries to get the speed back. Well, look at that, with that big error, just 0.47 seconds behind, but I think for the second time, but it will be slightly more. Landing at skiing in the LW4 class, which is similar to those in LW2, where they have an impairment in one leg only, but with less activity limitation and 0.26 oh what might have been for Matthias Lansing without that big error
52.43, time of landing it. Cedric Amafwa Boissa, the bronze medalist for the Super Combined in La Molina. That's his only major medal. His fourth Paralympic Games, his first Super Combined. And at the Paralympics, his best disciplines are the technical ones, so he could lay down a competitive run here. Last one's time at the first time, fit 29.48. And Anafua Boissa just over three quarters of a second off the place. Just setting up for this final terrain change on the side of the finish. And just getting a little out of shape, Anafua Boissa, but that's still going. A couple of gates from home. And Anafua Boissa goes for 2.47 off the pace. Straight off he goes, a little shake of the head. I'm sure he's too impressed. Gakuta Koike of Japan next out of the start. Had his third Winter Paralympic Games. No medals yet. He also competes in paracycling. His ambition is to win a medal at both Winter and Summer, Olympic Par Summer Paralympics. And he's going to start training seriously in paracycling. Tokyo 2020. Yeah. Koike in the LW682 category. Gears that have an impairment in one arm. Gears that have a combined arm leg impairment. And it's 2.71 seconds off the pace of Braden Lusker. Joyke doing well here. Last couple of gates, 52-17, won't be beaten, but how close can he get to give himself a shot at a medal? Well, 4.35, that's uh, a fair distance. Yeah, his supporters are happy. And Japan fans will uh, continue to cheer and shout because this is Hirako Misawa who's going great guns in the Super G on day three before falling inside of the finish, much to the despair of his friends and family. His first podium in the major was third in the Pyeongchang World Championship 2009. That was in slalom. Tenth in the Super Combined in Vancouver. And Masawa. Get close to Luskin's time. Well, he's 2.69 off the pace. He's got some decent speed going over the flat there. And we translate it into these turns in the lower part of the track. Oh, rescue turns to keep himself upright. Misawa. Can he give himself a shot at a medal? 52.17. Well, he's 3.86 off the pace. Fifth. difference between him and Cedric and Fabrosa who scores 1.4 seconds so there's a space on the leaderboard. Alexei Bugayev of Russia his first Paralympics he's won silver and bronze in the downhill and Super G respectively he's a double silver medalist from the world in giant slalom and super combined despite breaking his arm in the slalom won a slalom race in Copper Mountain Back in January, he won a super combined this season in Mount Hutton, New Zealand. And Bugayev is flying on this top section. 1.08 inside the pace of Luskin. The crowd is seated in the finish area and respond. Bugayev, brilliant skier to watch, and he's skiing this beautifully. Bugayev on a mission here. Can he keep it together? He doesn't want to make an error now inside of the finish. Bug, I have to take the lead away from Luscombe. Surely he'll be inside. He will be inside by 1.87 seconds. Brilliant ski from Bugayev. Wow, Bugayev with an excellent ski. Michael Brugge of Switzerland now. 
third. Let's see if we can find you know, United in Pyeongchang. He has Paralympic medals to his name. The silver in the downhill from Vancouver. P.S. from Nagano. Whoa! Oh, just gets back up. He's in the LW4 class. He's having him in one leg. Look at him, Stein. 28.4. He was the red hot favourite along with Lanzinger in this category. Lanzinger had a big mistake, didn't he, for the first time check. And he's starting in third place, 2.13 seconds off the pace of Bogayev. Ruger stops the clock, 7.26 off the pace, 57.5 seconds. Well, here's somebody who could get close in the slalom. Vincent Gauthier Manuel won the last two World Cup slalom in Sam Ritz before these games. He's the world champion in slalom, second in Vancouver in this discipline. But he's skied out at the top of the slalom run in the super combined. And disappointment for the French fans. I think he's got his line totally wrong there. Oh, the sliders to uh, Flattening out the line for Mitchell Gourlay of Australia. Pulls himself out of the start. He's playing World Cup podiums, but no Paralympic or World Championship medals. The second Paralympic Games. He's fifth in the slalom World Cup this year, and he's uh, seventh in the super combined standings. So just keeping an eye on that blue pole that he dislodged from the snow. Not that might catch up with him and go under his feet, which would be very unfortunate. But uh, Gourlay, doing a good job on these top turns. The LW682 category. The same as uh, Bugayev. And he stops the top 1.59 off the pace. Now, he's going nicely in the Super G before he skied out. Seventh in the downhill. What can the Australian do here? 50.3, Bugayev Stein. Gourlay struggling with the line. Gets it back but has to shave off speed. And he's fourth, 3.33 off the pace. Eight tenths off third at the moment. So Toby Kane, Australia, the next to go. Winner of the last Super Combined before these championships in Carvisio, the World Cup Finals. Nice. Oh, Olympic and World Championship medals to his name. What do we say here? Being in the LW2 class. He has a significant impairment in one leg. And Kane, first time set, is 2.33. Outside the calculated time of Bugayev. Nice turns there, though, from Kane. Now, can he keep this going all the way to the finish and set a competitive time? There's, uh, Two and a bit seconds between one and three, and Kane goes for 3.22. 11 hundredths in front of his teammate Mitchell Gourlay. Just over a second off third at the moment. And Gourlay is there to congratulate him. Alexander Betrov now of Russia. First Paralympic Games for him. Would have gone to Vancouver, but it was only 14 years of age and raised him in the Paralympics 
is 15. So finally getting a taste of Paralympics here. 13th and 11th in the downhill and Super G respectively. That job outside the time of his teammate Bougayev by two and three quarter seconds. The second the super combined this season. Oh, just gets hit by a rut and straddles inside of the finish. Oh, a huge disappointment. He's gutted. A little shake of the head from Bougayev in the finish area. But Vetrov will be very, very disappointed. Just got bounced out by a rut. Good angle of the error. Oh dear. All the effort, all the training that's gone in. And we can't make it to the second run. So, Matt Hallett now, Canada. Third Paralympic Games. Didn't race at the Worlds in 2013. Tenth in the Super Combined in 11. Now, how will Hallett go here? Whoa, no, 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 no. Well, gets in the back seat, gets flipped out. But, uh, back on track now. And this course is really rutting up. The six years are going to have a nightmare. And go last. Of all six categories. The pallet. Right, he skied out inside of the finish. So he won't be taking part. Second part of the Super Combined and uh, Canadian supporters doing the cheers across the line. Got the line wrong. Acknowledges the cheers. Thomas Fell of Switzerland, the last of the seeded skiers in this standing category of the men's super combined to go. Top 15 in the World Cup test points drawn randomly. The top 15 slots and Phil. Oh. I think he's missed that gate, has he? Well, he's right off the line. I oh, know he made it back inside, but really struggling with the line. Uh, sliding out of the racing line that's been left in the snow by those that have gone before him. And the ruts are brutal on this track. Five point five six seconds off the pace. Figure of time and stand Phil's challenge. Bill inside of the finish, 6.62 off the pace. Switzerland still searching for their 50th gold medal at the Winter Paralympic Games. Now, Adam Hall, he's won three of six slaloms on the World Cup Tour this year. Won the slalom crown in Vancouver. Third of the World Championships. Being in the LW1 class. Allocated athletes and impairments from affects both legs. Yeah, the effort going in now. First run going, 28.4, Bugayev's time, and Hall oh, just under two seconds off the pace. That's the 
match with skis chained together. Oh, good recovery. Brilliant recovery from Adam Hall. Now, can he finish? Can he get close to Bugayev's side? It's come, it's gone, and he is 2.7 seconds off the pace. Fourth for the time being for Adam Hall. Kirk, Sean Stein, of Canada now. Best finish in the major championship is 13 in Super Combined in 2011 in Sestriere. Hasn't had the best of times here in Sochi. Kenny put that behind him and lay down a run. And this is the slalom leg of the Super Combined. Good work from Sean Stein. So we have Stein 50.3. And Sean Stein is inside of the finish. He's not going to beat Bugayev, but uh, his time is 57.62, 7.32 seconds off the pace. in France of Slovakia is the next out of the start hut for Slovakia. Two times since third at World Championships. Downhill 09, but slowly in 04. His first time big finish is fourth in Torino in the giant slalom. He's skiing in the LW91. Masters is for skiers that have an impairment that affects arms and legs or coordination problems such as spasticity or loss of control of one side of their body. And France doing a good job here in this slalom leg of the super combined. Couple more turns, and he's home. 57.09, goes 12. Well, just behind Thomas Phil. This is Martin Wirtz of Austria's first Paralympic. He's a technical skier. They should like this track. And some good turns on the top here from Wurtz. Oh, just gets in the back seat a little bit there and has to use his strength to get the skis round. He's 2.43 off the pace of Bugayab. Wurtz. Gets it back under control. Again, a little skid of his skis. Making life difficult for him, but again, he's quickly back into the rhythm. The day of time has come and gone. He's worked up the clock. 4.25 off the pace. He's eight. And, uh, it's fairly tight in the midfield of this competition. <laughs> Thomas Grosha of Austria, the next to go. His first Paralympic Games, his best major result, 15th from the Super Combined in La Molina. It's just being held here. W2 class. The skiers that have a significant impairment, impairment one leg. 
So Grosha off and skiing here. Lifted. Oh, the early big numbers having really tricky conditions, especially to see them on this part of the track. It's uh, more of a spectacle now as Grosha stops the clock, 3.47 seconds off the time of Bugayev. Fifty point three, the time of Bugayev. Goshar's outside of the way. Only stopped the clock. Five point one six. Slot into tenth position. Good work from Bugayev. He is tenth after the first run. Of the super combined. Five more to go. The first of which is James Stanton of the United States. Now. He can ski slalom. He's fourth in the World Cup slalom standing. How can he go here? He's skiing in the LW4 class for skiers that have impaired in one leg only, but with less activity limitation. Typical example is a below knee amputation in one leg. And he's got only two skis during the race. And Stanton. Sugar's time of 28.4 to aim at. He's outside it, and he's outside it by 2.47 seconds. Sugar's time really is. Oh, no, 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 no. Right. Got the line all wrong. And I think we do. We'll have a look at that to see where his boots were in relation to to the gate, and seven seconds off the pace, he's 15 for the moment here at Stanton. And as I say, it's interesting just to see that error on the finishing pitch. Christoph Brodal of Switzerland, a 23 year old in his first Paralympics. He did have ambitions of making the Swiss able bodied team. But, uh, he's uh, got his line wrong on the top and uh, had to kill all his speed. He's really struggling on the ruts and bumps of this slalom track. Still got another 26 gears to come in the sit ski. Yeah, gonna have a very difficult time of it, but uh, not enjoying himself here. Didn't start the Super Chiefs. This is his first outing in Sochi Snow. And, uh, sadly for him. Comes to the DNF. Disappointment for the Swiss supporter. They've still got one skier to come. Yoshi Jockey Roethlisberger will be the last to ski in the standing category so Christoph Roda is a DNF late 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 and he's gone the wrong way through that red gate he's missed the red gate tried to get back up but his ski pole stuck underneath his ski and uh, decided to return Andrzej Sh Szczesny of Poland 15th in Vancouver his best result he's uh, a good technical skier so let's see how he goes here LW2 class. And still containing one leg. Four point three seven. The wrong side of Bugayev's time for Shesny. They're going nicely here. Oh no! Commentator's curse. And Chesney falls and will DNF. Yeah, 
This is getting later and later in the line. And got uh, bumped out of it. So, Hans-Jörg Lachner of Italy. Never raced a super combined before. And Lachner seeing the LW92 class. And having impairment effects arms and legs. And coordination problems, some have spasticity. They also control one side of their body. And Lachner doing a good job on these top turns. Ooh, just getting caught on the edge. But, uh, he's got it back under control now. Oof. Again, sudden change of direction. That's better. Getting the gates out of his way. 6.75 off the pace. That's snap. Ooh, again, the big ruts and bumps. Almost uh, putting pay to his challenge. And in the end. Well, no, he's okay. That's okay. You can see how big the ruts are that are forming on the racing line. The cows coming back in. Oh, he'll be happy to get to the bottom here. Well, hands your clutch A couple of gates from home, and he's done it. 15.58 off the pace. With uh, miserable conditions for the Italian. Jockey Roethlisberger of Switzerland in the LW571 class, his first Paralympics, his first super combined in a major competition. And he always wears a bandana when he races. And how many fair here? Decent turns on these top gates. Coming in on the bottom part, so Mr. still has the hardest bit to come. Won't be able to see too many of the ruts, and he's been bounced off the racing line. Just coming onto the flat, which is the worst place to lose your speed. 0.44 off the pace, and I'm sure that will get worse as we get further down. As he uh, comes to the cloud, and he is now out. Just, uh, too much to get back onto the racing line. Disappointment for Roethlisberger. Little shake of the head. So, uh, a very difficult condition for him to contend with. He bounced out of the line earlier on. Yeah, he just couldn't make it back. So, delight for Russia, at least at the halfway point of the Super Combined for the standing category in the men. Alexei Bugayev leads the way from Braden Luskup, who put down a brilliant run in his first Paralympics. He's second. Matthias Lanzinger is uh, in third. And, uh, well, with a speed event to come, there could be plenty of shake-up in the medal standings yet. But, uh, those within about four or five seconds will fancy their chances of taking Paralympic gold. A number of non-finishers. Amongst them, a couple of the Russian athletes, Laviev and Vetrov, much to their disappointment. So, Bugayev has the advantage at the halfway mark. And that just leaves us with the one category, the sixth category for the men. And all of them going through their warm up routine. Going through the course in their minds. And Horse softening up all the while. And slalom races, the individual slalom <laughs> races being raced at, in the afternoon and at night. So, 
these guys or some of these athletes will be back for that. Nod of the head. Roman Rabel. And that's as we look back up the post piece. The men's super combined sitting. Run one. About to get underway. Slalom first instead of Super G, which is the usual first run. The Super G leg postponed until further notice because of the weather. So we're opening up with Slalom. Let's have a look at the start list. The top 11 athletes drawn randomly. Josh Duick of Canada, silver medalist. And the downhill goes at six. The uh, defending champion is number 73, Taiki Mori. The Kira Kane, who's the double gold medalist in these games in the speed events, goes at 10. We've got 26 skiers in total competing in this final category of the day. Well, I say top 11. Randomly drawn then from Kenji Natsume all the way down to the end. It is on the Ipcast points in descending order. Dietmar Dorn of Austria will get us underway in this men's super combined sitting category going in the lw11 class three classes in the sitting category lw11 is for skiers that have good abilities in their upper trunk but very limited control in their lower trunk and hips and, uh, the ruts on this course caused by the five categories before this a brutal look at him bouncing around in his sit ski. And, uh, well, by the end, it would have been 90 odd skiers down the piece today. That's very, very difficult for the late starters. I think my door. The six feet, four skier down. There's two non starters earlier on. I think he's missed that blue gate. Bravo. Maybe not. So Dawn's continuing on his way. Oh, well, he's missed that one. And uh, well, virtually impossible for the guys here to see the lumps and bumps. And if they see them, they can't do anything about it. Not like they have four edges or two inside edges to work with and a little shrug of the shoulders from Deep Mar yeah. Dawn. Thomas Nolte of Germany, third in the World Cup slalom standings. He's on the last slalom for these games is the next here out of the start hut. And he too struggling with these really difficult conditions. Big, big holes forming now. Some of these ruts now having cliffs and we're getting back to conditions that we had earlier on in the day. Trying to pick up athlete out of the mist. And Merck. Nolte. Doing it. A decent job here. And set a time. For the others to uh, challenge. Side of the finish, and Nolte 
is down. 59.25. Congratulations to him. Next to go, Frederick Francois of France in the LW11 class. His first Paralympic Games. Horton Slalom Giants on Super G at the Worlds last year. And Lamalini can fit in Super Combined. So what can Siri Moore do here? He's got to attend with some horrible, horrible conditions. Wet. Bumpy snow, terrible visibility. And you can see he's just trying to pick the gates as he goes. And he's doing a pretty decent job of it. Francois is inside the time of tape by just over a third of a second. down is he he was going well wasn't he no he can't get back up he got done by a rut to Francois and Frederick Francois picks up a DNF got bounced there got it back under control just there got pushed up into the air and he wasn't getting back round he's late in the line that's what he did for him Well, the French flags will continue to fly because the next athlete is also from France. They have uh, two more to go. At the moment, they are playing for Frederic Francois. But shortly, we'll be waiting for this man, Cyril Moore. But if you're tuning in, thinking this is the second run of the Super Combined. It isn't, this is the first. The slalom and Super Ski have been swapped round because of the terrible weather we had this morning. And as you can see, it hasn't got much better. And Cyril Moore was bounced out of the second gate and he's still being bounced all over the place. And uh, he's broken his pole as well. So he's lost the uh, ski from his outrigger. Well... It all went wrong from the first turn for Cyril Moore. Well, there's absolutely nothing he could do there. And, well, pole goes in, it trips him up. strong Japanese Sitski team preparing to lay down their challenge. The first of them will be Taiki Mori, the defending champion. There he is. So, my forward, Philippe Bonademan of Austria. Bronze medalist in the Super Combined from Vancouver. Slalom world champion. And how can he fare in the toughest of conditions? We have uh, one skier down. From the four that have gone. This is our fifth skier. Man. Oh, good job. How is he on the time? And the answer is he's inside by four tenths of a second. Eight in the Super G, having not raced uh, downhill. The diameter of the slalom poles, slightly less than you would see on the normal 
the able-bodied FIS World Cup to allow the skier to hit them with their shoulder without uh, fear of injury. And Bonner, Bonadiman, 0.17 off the pace of Nolte. Next out is Josh Dweck of Canada. Won the first slalom of the season, Coronet Peak back in August. Second in the downhill. His best super combined result was 11th in the World Championship to Sestriere. And uh, well, he's been bounced all over the shop and he's just taken his speed off. Again, just watch the back of the Sitski thud into the snow. Hats off to these athletes. Such difficult, difficult conditions in which to try and ski. 98% of us would look out the window, see this condition and say, no, we're staying in today. But not these uh, men and women. There are medals to be won. And uh, they want them. So Nolte's time, 59.5. Two five. Josh Dirk trying to give himself a shot at another medal here by getting to the bottom of the slalom run. And he's doing all right. Dirk stops the time. 0.68 off the pace. It's tied at the top. Two thirds of a second separating the top three. Johan Tabele, who's seen his two compatriots ski out before him. His third Paralympic Games. He's never finished on the podium. Ninth in the Super Combined in Vancouver. He has a World Championship bronze medal in Super Combined from uh, Sestriere. And the French are not having a good day of it. The third of uh, their three skiers, skis out. Bounced out of it again. So difficult. It's a matter of keeping your speed in check on the steep, letting it go on the relatively flat section, and then again checking it towards the end. He's out there somewhere. Now the defending, or should I say the reigning world champion of Super Combine. He's off and going fourth in Vancouver, second in the Super G. Himself a decent finish here. With every chance of a medal for Taiki Mori. Again, the six is getting bounced around all over the place. Mori doing an excellent job so far. And he's one and a half seconds inside the time of Thomas Nolte. Moy looks like he's skiing well, and the clock says he is too. He's skiing in the LW11 class. The skiers have good abilities in that upper trunk. Oh no, and as we talk about it, the error that uh, will cost him a lot of time. But how much time? We'll find out just now. Whoa! Well, Look how close he is, he could still even get inside. Well, he's only a quarter of a second off the pace. I'm not sure he didn't miss a gate further up though. Just to wait and see. A little shake of the head and I'm not surprised. Roman Rabel of Austria, the leader of the World Cup. Super combined standings. One in Panorama in January. And team at the end of January, his first Paralympic Games. 
Can he find himself a first medal? Fourth in the downhill, didn't finish the Super G. This time, roll take 0.82. So, Roman Rabble doing a good job. Ooh, has to get sideways to make the next gate, and then he gets bounced in that vertical section. These cross gates, not as bad as the verticales. Now, 59.25, we have a new leader. It's Roman Rabble of Austria, who sets the new pace at the bottom. 58. 0.71, Thomas Nolte bumped down into second place. Akira Kena of Japan. Two goals already for him in these Paralympics. He's not really a slalom skier. But he'll be hoping to get the bottom to give himself a chance in the Super G. More of a speed expert. Let's hope he doesn't try and open up the throttle too much because he will get bounced right out of it. Good turns. Just taking his time. A little late there. I need to get sideways to get back for the red gate. Now, let's get run through the verticale. Well, he's half a second inside the time of Roman Rabble. Kano skiing the LW11 class. Excuse our have good abilities in their upper trunks. Rabble in the L. Oh, oh no! And another skier comes to grief on that verticale section. Oh dear. Kano's chances of five golds goes right there. Again though, strange choice of lens. Great guns. Yeah, you see that verticale section just can't get back for the blue gate. Such a big, big rut there. Hello, Bruce in Canada there, but this is Takeshi Suzuki of Japan. On his first speed medal on day one of these games in the downhill when he was third. That's, uh, Oh, he's very late in the line there. Has he missed the gate? Yeah, he has. I'm going to say, World Championship Gold and Super Combined from 2011, but he's not going to be getting a medal in Super Combined here in Sochi. So France not having a good day of it, and Japan not having a good day of it. In this uh, set ski category, men Super Combined. Oh, the straddle is the problem. So, Japan still have Akira Taniguchi to come. So let's go, come on now. There we go. Good. Thanks, folks. Not again. <laughs> there's been there, but this is Caleb Brusto, who with a brilliant bronze in the Super G. Course workers having to get out of the way as Brusto starts his challenge. Eleventh of the World Championships in Yamalina in Super Combined. You've got to be careful here because he's going to get bounced all over the place. And, uh, should just check his speed. Bruce doing a brilliant job of staying upright. The last of the uh, seeded skiers. And he's two tenths the right side of the clock. It's Roman Rabble's time. Bruce skiing the LW12-1. Fast the same class as uh, Rabble. Oh, no, 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 no. Another skier comes to grief on the verticale. Oh, 
Look how soft the snow is there. Just got bounced out of it. Couldn't make it back for the blue gate. Below it. And it's okay now there. Uh, the, sil the gold and bronze medals from the Super Combined. Have a little chat, another little chat. Kenji Natsume of <laughs> Japan. I'm not sure what happened there. Did he get tangled up in the starting one? Well, he's just making sure these opening turns. Look how bumpy that is. Almost like taking on a mogul field. Just making sure. And, uh, once he gets off his steeper section, maybe he'll let, let it run. Got two DNS's name so far in Sochi. Most disappointingly in the giant slalom. In the finishing pitch, two gates from home. He uh, went down. Only race Super G in Vancouver, but he's uh, crossed the board here. He's, uh, he's seven seconds off the pace. The attentive nature of his ski costing him that, but hey, he might get to the bottom where others haven't, so he needs to say this is the wrong tactic. And Sume. Good job on negotiating the steep pitch coming up to these difficult gates. He's done well inside of the finish. Two from home, and he's there. Ten seconds off the pace. He's six. And only six skiers have made it to the bottom of this slalom piece so far. Out of 12, 50% success rate. Yasmin Bamba. Of the United States, who uh, competed in Vancouver under the Serbian flag. Well, he was the first Serbian athlete to compete at the Power Winter Games. He's never finished a Super Combined at Paris or a World, but he's now representing the United States of America. Well, let's see how he goes on his opening turn. 12 more to come after Bamba. Now, an error, but he still made the gate. And, uh, still keeping the super combined hopes alive. 2.94. You see, if you make a mistake on the steep section, it's not so bad. It's when you make it on the flat that it's the real problem. But he's still got the the deal breaker turns, the money turns to come. Here they come right now. And he uh, hits the pole and skis out. So disappointment for Bamba. Just got late in the line, bounced off the rut and uh, couldn't get across for the red gate. Not the first and not the last year to come to grief on that verticale section. It is so soft the snow. Thomas Jakobsen of Norway. Waiting, waiting and waiting. A lot of waiting for him. And Christoph Kunst, but this is Steve Calhoun of uh, the USA. Fourth in the Super G. Tenth in the Super Combined in Vancouver. Just a couple in the Super Combined this season. There's uh, no podium finishes. And we'll pick his way through the fog and the rut. At least if the sun was out, you could see the ruts coming. Here, you've just got no hope. They're just upon you before you know it. A decent job by Calhoun, and he's oh, only half a second off the pace. 0.71 separates Roman Ravel from Philip Bonademan in third. 
come these money turns. He's done a good job. Now, three or four from home. Calhoun will make it to the bottom. And he's fifth, under a second off the pace of Roman Ravel. Good job from Heath Calhoun. And it's shown those still at the top that it can be done. Akira Taniguchi, the last of the Japanese skiers to go. They have one down, Kenji Natsume of the four that had gone before. And uh, Taniguchi, like Natsume, taking his time on those top turns. Taniguchi in the RW11 class is the sitting category. And, uh, Oh, bumped around all over the place. He's more of a technical skier than he is a slalom skier, but this is more about survival than it is technical skiing. These ruts and the weather. And, uh, he's a, he's way off the pace, 6.12 off the pace. Kanaguchi. Coming on to this final pitch. And he's very difficult, verticale gates. Here they come. And he does well. So 58.71 won't be beaten, but Taniguchi will get to the bottom and he'll stop the clock up. 108.60 and he goes seven just above his teammate uh, Natsume who is a 1600 slower. Georg Kreiter of Germany the next to go his first Paralympic Games and uh, he too taking it easy at the start up because it is impossible to see. And, uh, no, enough is enough for him. Miserable conditions. And enough is enough for him. And he's late on that red gate. And then I think they just thought there was way too much speed. Skiers are finished of the 15 that have gone now. Dino Sokolovic, the next out of the gate. A decent slalom skier. Fifth in the World Cup standings. We won a race in Samaritz before these Paralympics, but the conditions wouldn't have been like this, that is for sure. It's a race for the Croatian swim team as well. Ooh, now, has he managed to keep it on track? He has. And so actually, he's just injected some speed into his set. Uh, run he bounced around all over the place but doing a fantastic job of uh, staying on track now Sokolovic where is he oh look at that 0.82 inside a great run from Sokolovic using all of his uh, slalom skills Oh dear, but not to be for the Croatian. And just when the skiers have been in front, they've lost it on those money turns down the bottom. And uh, another skier fails to get to the bottom. He was motoring, wasn't it? Yeah, he was just <laughs> going too fast in the wrong direction. So, 10 
is a fail to finish here. Now, Corey Peters of New Zealand. On the super combined at the start of the season in home snow in Mount Hutt. South Paralympics didn't finish the super combined at the Worlds in Lamalina. Uh, doesn't mind the slalom course and he's uh, doing pretty well. He's got a good action here. Ooh, he just gets bumped up there, but he's trying to absorb the lumps and bumps by falling into them rather than bouncing off the top of them. So far, it's working all right. Now, Sokolovic is in front of Ravel. Is Peters. It's going to be close. No, 0.93 off the pace. Oh! And that has killed it. On the flattest part of the track, Corey Peters loses all his speed. And he has to start from scratch. And now it's a matter of just getting down. And uh, coming back to the super jeep. Well, he's doing the pedal to another trying to make up some lost time. But he's having to kill the speed on the money turns rather than ski out. 58.71 comes and goes. Peters does a good job. 4.53 goes seventh for the time being. He's finished, which is uh, better than most so far. Kurt Oatway of Canada in the LW12 class. So, good run in the downhill. Repeat it in the Super G. Let's see how he goes here. That's the line, little one gets a big hit on that cliff on the downside. Plenty of skier to go. Kind of not finished. Nine have. And that will make it a 50 50 split. High attrition rate today. Oh, he's going the wrong way. He's missed that red gate. And that way he skis out. And uh, the flattest part of the course. Mm -hmm. More Canadians at the top of the park. Top of the beast we have. But ski from the Czech Republic, Switzerland. Two from Switzerland. Great Britain, Korea and Norway to come. Done. Just got bumped totally off the line. So disappointment for oh wait. And Olgosh Yelenich waits for the wand and he's off in the LW101 class. Yelenich to the combine it Vancouver or the World Championships. Not to afford a finish here. And, uh, Sochi. Oh, no, 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 no. And he gets bounced out of the... One and oh, Has he hurt his hand? Has he hurt his hand? being asked if he's okay. Let's have a look. Oh, it's a big, big hit. Oh, it should be okay. He goes for that right wrist straight away. It's got jarred on the handle. And he's helped back up onto his ski. is checking he's all right so next up will be Christoph Kunz of Switzerland the downhill champion from Vancouver no major medals in super combined I'm not sure he's going to enjoy this match I'm not sure anybody 
enjoys this too much. One of the hardest of conditions for this Paralympic super combined, the first run. Surviving the top turns where you can't see, and then down here you can just see a little bit more, trying to put some speed into the proceedings, but just so difficult, you just can't see the massive ruts coming at you. The swims well goes down, but that's a good recovery. And four, two, six, off the pace of our leader, Roman Rabel of Austria. And Prince is well offline and he's missed the red gate. But too hard on the blue, too far over to the skier's right. And can't make it back across to the red gate. And then there were four left. Princeton not enjoying the Alpine here in Sochi. That will be the last chance for them to support one of their athletes today. He comes here, he's going the wrong way. He needs to be tighter in that blue gate to make it across to the red. So Mick Brennan of Great Britain in the LW12-2 class is next out of the start hut. First Paralympic Games, returning from a couple of injuries, one of which was a broken sternum last year. First next serviceman to represent Great Britain out at the Paralympics. And we've seen that from before him. Mm -hmm. Well, he advised to take this slightly easy and just get down and regroup for the second run, which will be the super combined. Which will at a later time. And Brennan doing just that. Eight seconds off the pace. Oh, well, almost gets spun all the way round, but does a good job to recover it. That's where Kunt went out. Brennan still upright, albeit just these are the money turns with the big rut in it. He's through there. Not sure he'll be too impressed with conditions when he gets to the bottom. But he's done well, Mick Brennan. He survived what is a very difficult slalom run, and he goes 10. Well, 23 skiers have gone, only 10 have made it down. Park Yong Siok of Korea in the LW11 class. More of a speed man than a technical man. But let's see how he goes on the slalom track. Well, below that red gate. And supporters. We want to see if he's above that red gate. That's what we want to do. It looks like he's. It looks like he's below it. Or has he got his? Well, we didn't see. I think he's got his pole back round the gate, so he's okay to continue. Our question is how he fares. Not well at the start, but he can still make it to the bottom. He can still give himself another shot at the Super G and the Super Combined. Better turns here from Park, just uh, opening up the speed here. Got that line right, 23 seconds, so that's all of that would have been on trying to get back to that red gate. He's still got to negotiate these money turns. This, this vertical section, the gate's coming now. And 
On the right, the scene from Park. Oh, just gets back for that red gate. Having got late in the line, Park will finish, but he's uh, a long way off the pace, 27 seconds, which is not really a surprise considering he went down. And a shake of the head. But, uh, Decent effort all the same. Right, Thomas Jakobsen of Norway, the former captain of the Norway ice stage hockey team. He won bronze in Vancouver in ice stage hockey. Now a Paris skier. With a severe head injury he picked up in ice stage hockey. Didn't want that to be repeated, so decided to take up the sport of alpine skiing. Didn't finish the super combine. And doing a good job in these top turns of surviving. Just trying to stay inside those big ruts that have formed around the gates. Seconds off the pace, but uh, more matter of survival now. Jakobsen into the final pitch through these money vertical turns. Doing really well to stay upright. That's not a curse on him. A couple of gates now to negotiate. And he's home. 18 seconds off the pace. He's goes 11. Two seconds or so off the pace of Mick Brennan in 10th and just above Park in 12th. But he's happy to be down. And there is one skier left at the top. And he is Swiss. Maurizio Nicoli. Who is not going to start, so that is the standings after the first run of the Super Combined, the slalom run in the sitting category. Roman Rabble leads the way from Thomas Nolte of Germany and Austria in third place as well through Philippe Bondiaman. But uh, a lot of skiers not finishing. 26 due to start, only 12 finish. The biggest names to full casualty, the world champion Taki Mori of Japan and Takeshi Suzuki, the silver medalist from the world championships. But the field has been hard for the second run. Well, a miserable day for skiing and supporting. Congratulations to all the athletes on the job well done and the supporters on a job well done on a difficult day here at the Rosa Kuta Alpine Centre. Let's remind ourselves of some of the highlights of uh, competition here on uh, day four of the Sochi 2014 Winter Paralympic Games. Well, it has been brutal, it's been frustrating, it's been emotional, 
it's been difficult but the first part of this super combined race has been run it's the slalom that was done first because the super combined the super giant slalom sorry that was supposed to be run this morning has been delayed we don't have but information yet of when that will happen but uh, we're halfway through it it was incredibly difficult on this slalom piece our first look at the slalom course here in Sochi for these Winter Paralympic Games and it was we thought it would be difficult and it showed its teeth in no uncertain terms today with a lot of skiers skiing out and thank you very much for your company hope you've enjoyed our coverage and we will be back at a later time to conclude this super combined until then thank you very much once again